Danielle, thank you so much for joining us here today. Hi, Daryl. Happy to be here. So can you tell us a bit about what this project would have looked like? Sure. So the um, the gondola project was supposed to be five stations uh, with 19 columns that stretch across the river valley. It was a two and a half kilometer stretch from some um, historic sites such as the Rossdale power plant, uh, as well as um, the steel plant across the river in Edmonton's White Avenue neighborhood. So it was uh, the plan was to connect to downtown with um, with the other side of the river in Edmonton. So what can you tell us about the burial site in question here? Yeah, the burial site has been um, a conversation since the 1970s. So um, previous uh, to that, there was the Flats, which was a, a very important trading station, as well as a ceremonial site for um different for indigenous communities there was uh, the last sundance in the city was held in that place and there's also a, a burial site as well so the burial site has multiple layers of um of remains stretching back uh I, i've heard activity as early as like twelve thousand years ago um but more recently there were uh, both early settlers and indigenous people buried in that site did the gondola idea have some indigenous support Yes, there was some support. Um, the former chief of the Alexis Nakota Sioux First Nation um, and now the CEO of Tribal Chief Ventures spoke in support. Uh, there was some support from the Papa Chase First Nation, um, although there was also opposition from the Papa Chase Papeo First Nations acting chief George Quinn. So it was, it was very much a mixed uh, response from the Indigenous community. So Danielle, what were some of the concerns that eventually led to the grounding of the project. Yeah, Councillor Aaron Paquette, uh, the only Indigenous member of City Council, uh, referred to the initial stages of the Prairie Sky Gondola uh, consultations with Indigenous communities as a manufactured consent. So his concern was that um, they the organization went looking specifically for people that would agree with them and stayed away from the more uh, critical voices. And I think we saw that come out at the city council meetings themselves when um, there were over 50 people initially lined up to speak. Uh, and they all had various opinions. But what we heard over and over again from Indigenous community members uh, was that they felt, th the ones that spoke in opposition felt that this was uh, not an appropriate use for this sacred site. All right, Danielle, we'll have to leave it there. We certainly appreciate your insight into this. You can read more on the story on our website, aptnnews.ca. Thank you again, Danielle. Thank you.